Magandang hapon mga kababayan, kayo po ay nanonood ng Kababayan LA. This is the background and you know what that means. Uunahan na po namin kayo, magkakainan na kami ngayon sa Kababayan LA. But we're not just going to be eating, we're going to be teaching you some new dishes, more specifically Japanese and Filipino fusion. You know, Christmas is in two weeks. I know a lot of you are going to be cooking for your family, so wait till you get our recipes for today because we're going to teach you some dishes that are easy to prepare and also very delish. And speaking of delish, not too long ago, we were in Korea. We traveled all over, we traveled around, and one thing that we also did in Korea was we tried our hand at making kimchi. Watch this. In Korea, kimchi is not just a Korean dish that's rich in flavor. It also reflects a part of Korean culture that's rich in history. And if you want to know more about this, the place to go is the Pomo One Kimchi Museum. The Kimchi Museum was built to study the culture of kimchi and also serves to provide correct information about kimchi to Koreans and foreigners. Pumo One Inc. originally built the museum in Pildong, Junggu in 1986 for the 1988 Summer Olympic Games. The museum was moved to the Co-Ex to publicize kimchi to more foreigners. The museum includes displays of historic cooking utensils, a variety of kimchi, and other materials related to making, storing, and eating kimchi, including a special highlight about Kim Jong preparing kimchi in a special way for winter. Data on fermentation and the beneficial effects of kimchi are also on display. The library, tasting room, and kimchi shop are also helpful in helping to understand kimchi. But my favorite is the instruction room, where we got down and dirty making our own Korean kimchi. Last week, we showed you how to prepare our main ingredient, which is cabbage, cut into four parts, soak in water with salt. While you soak for six hours, you can set that aside and make the paste. Apron on, gloves on, all the ingredients in front of me. And now, if I can only remember the steps. Are you ready for the challenge? Let's do this. Slice radish into thin strips of about three to four inches long. Put in a stoneware and add pepper or chili powder. Mix well. You can add as much chili powder as you like, depending on how spicy you want your kimchi to be. Repeat the same process with scallions, cut into small pieces, and mix with chili powder. You'll be able to tell how spicy your kimchi paste is by its color. The redder the mix, the hotter it is. In another stoneware, prepare half a cup of chili powder and add a tablespoon of ground garlic and teaspoon of ground ginger. Make sure the ratio of garlic to ginger is 3 teaspoons to 1. Add 5 teaspoons of sticky rice soup. This helps to make the powder mix well. Add 3 teaspoons of fermented shrimp and 2 teaspoons of anchovy juice for flavor. Add 1 teaspoon of plum juice to make the paste a bit sweeter. Then, add the radish and scallions. When everything is mixed together, you are now ready to spread paste onto the cabbage. Remember to start from the bottom up. Make sure you spread paste evenly, keeping in mind that the bottom part of the cabbage is thicker than the end part of the leaves. Go from leaf to leaf, starting from the outermost leaf going inward. When finished, wrap the outside leaves going in like a baby blanket. This is the end look that we're aiming for, and voila, your kimchi is ready. Store in the fridge and serve cold. Of course, we know that kimchi is traditional Korean, pero traditional Filipino naman, lumpia. And though it can be delicious, sometimes it's boring as well. So when we return on the show, we'll teach you how to make lumpia with a twist.